to begin with, we know that our Blessed Mother is the key, is the mediatrix of all graces. We have been praying to her. And so I thought that um, we have to talk about her today. Next, we also want to talk about St. Joseph because this year is the year of St. Joseph as Pope Francis has invited us to contemplate. And then third, we want, of course, to center our lives on the most important person in our, uh, for us, no? and that is Jesus. Through him, with him, and in him. That actually is St. Paul's words no? in the book of, uh, or in his letter to the Romans. It's a doxology, meaning words of praise. It's only for our Lord, everything in our Lord Jesus Christ, the unique mediator, St. Paul's letter to Timothy. However, he has involved two key persons in his life to be instrumental for our salvation. So I, I proceed now to my first point. So everything in our, in our lives will have to have a reflection or centralization in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith, Catholicism, Christianity, has one very important person, and that is our Lord. Our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus, the Messiah, the, Mess the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, who will have to be at the center of our lives. This means that we have to be, if we are centering our lives on our Lord, Jesus Christ, to be very close also to Him in the Eucharist. And that has definitely some consequences in relation to how you organize your day, how the Mass is present in your Sunday, how the Holy Mass is present in the weekdays as well, if you can. So in Jesus means that you have to be Eucharistic and try as well to put our Lord, the Eucharist, somehow now present in the day. So let, let's go to the second part. Uh, through Mary. No, um, we always address um, Mary as BVM, the Blessed Virgin Mary. How could we have Our Lady always close to us? She is the way, the easiest, through which we can arrive at Christ. And I also would love to use the acronym BVM for that to happen. The very first po point and this is to take care of the praying of the rosary. Our Lady allows us to contemplate the gospel scenes. It is through Mary by which we learn the Bible in beads. It's beautiful. We contemplate the episodes of our Lord's life. This is from St. John Paul II, a compendium of the gospels. Through the rosary, we are able to be dealing with Christ through the rosary. The rosary is like a Bible in beads. Very brief uh, summary of the history. When, when these early Christians from the East repeated prayers, they wanted the salutation of the angel, Mary Senecal angel, connected also to the angels. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Okay, that one is from angel Archangel Gabriel. And then they connected another greeting from her cousin, Blessed art thou among women. And so that was the Hail Mary at the start. They passed on the tradition to the Benedictines. So they have a very important role. The origins of the Rosary is from that family. As they prayed, the, you would say, hours or the breviary. Since some of them could not read the Latin. And since they have to put their minds on what they're praying, they designed a prayer, Ave Maria, to substitute the 150 Psalms. Fast forward, another century passed, they handed it to the Carthusians. The Carthusians slowly included some other prayers to this wonderful Ave Maria, Marian Psalter, and that's how the mysteries began. They passed it on, the tradition, to the Dominicans, and the Dominicans propagated it. Alain de, Ro de la Roche, the, uh, the most famous um, Cartusian, is Dominic of Prussia. Passed it on to Alain de la Roche, or de la Rupe, 
who will propagate, spread that such devotion until we have the rosary right now. So it has passed on from the 8th century onwards to our days. And we are united with all Christians through these beads. It is through the rosary of the Blessed Virgin that many of the people of God can really become close to Christ. It is the Bible in beads, the breviary in beads, the blessing in beads, the brotherhood in beads. So um, BVM, B, keep, uh, take good care of the beads of the rosary. Now, pray it as often as you can. Second point is letter V. Uh, so V stands for victory. It is a painting of a uh, representation of the Battle of Lepanto, Our Lady of Victory. Our Lady of Rosary started with the attribution of this Giresli, Antonio Giresli, the Pope Pius V, who was also Dominican, and um, he trusted Our Blessed Mother, praying the Rosary, Our Lady of Victory, in 1571, is symbolic that started the tradition of Our Lady of Victory, Our Lady of the Rosary. But this is also true in all our struggles. It is through Mary that we obtain victories. Of course, we have petitions and we want them to be fulfilled by our Lord Jesus Christ. We go to her to ask her for it's their fulfillment or the answer. But at the same time, we also have our own struggles personally. This is what you call the struggle for holiness, the struggle against sin, the combat against our, our temptations, against the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, against our slothfulness, against the other sinfulness and our tendency towards that. So that victory, not only in the 1571 battle, is made possible also through Our Lady. So BVM, take care of the beads, keep in mind that victory always depends on her and last but not the least she is the mediatrix letter m now our lady is the mediatrix meaning she mediates between us and christ i think we're all familiar with this story and the image actually portrays it the wedding at cana the wedding at cana when our lord apparently unaware that it was still it was already his time was asked by our mother to perform a miracle and he was obliged because it's our lady who's asking that because of this the early christians from saint john's narrative onwards have always gone to her and consider her as a mediator a personal story um, um i i don't have so many miracles i could narrate to our blessed about our blessed mother but this is something that um that really happened no um there was a time i studied elsewhere no i studied in spain and i could not understand any word as soon as i landed there you know i was in university of navarre and my only solace now because if you are in abroad no and uh, you, have, you have to use a different language you need to adapt and uh, understand fast no so um the only thing i could do i was not a priest then no? was to go to the shrines of our mother and ask and request that she interprets things for me and i always i always sense things uh from then onwards no? after many visits to the shrine although i could not understand the words the spanish language completely i would sense when people are enjoying and people are talking about something or talking about me or laughing and I laugh with them. No, I think Our Lady helped me to feel, F-E-E-L, -E 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 feel better, to have a better emotional quotient out of that experience. And soon enough, after two to three months, I was able to understand as well. Now, I share this because in our day, there are so many things we cannot understand. There are so many things that are happening that we, uh, we never foresaw we never imagined that would happen. The pandemic, the virus that has yeah, claimed lives as we pray in the Orazio Imperata, our plans, no? and we go to our Blessed Mother, this mediatrix, this mediator towards our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we could comprehend things. 
perhaps without us exerting much effort. Okay, second part of the talk is about St. Joseph. Now, in relation to St. Joseph, there is a document that I hope you could all read. And this is the document written by the Holy Father, Pope Francis. The title of such work is Patris Corde, the heart of the Father. We are in the last stretch of this St. Joseph uh, year. It ends on December 8th. And the Holy Father's reflections are very easy to understand. They are very accessible. And they are simply traits of St. Joseph, virtues of his as a good father, the heart of a father, as the title entails, that could help each one of us, I think, be virtuous persons as well. So in the inspiration of St. Joseph, Pope Francis outlines which are these virtues we need right now. In the year of the pandemic, it started with that, December 8, 2020 until December 8, 2021. And what does the Holy Father say about St. Joseph? So I use another acronym. J-O-S-E-P-H. <laughs> the name of Joseph. No? So St. Joseph is a working father. St. Pope Francis highlights. And St. Matthew says that he is that just man. He gives the necessary, you would say, work that has to be allotted each day. He doesn't fool people. He's a very honest artisan or carpenter. He works hard. In this year of St. Joseph, closely working with our screens, easily distracted. It's a good examination of conscience already for, uh, for you and me. Do we work hard? Are we giving justice to the talents that God has given us, for example? Oh, it's the obedience of St. Joseph. With him, we also learn that his, the obedience has to be prompt. Sometimes, when even asked by God, even um, communicated by the Holy Spirit now in our personal prayer, um, he tells us we have to do something. We have to talk to one another. We have to forget about hatred, grudges. And this, in St. Joseph, so although it's uh, a very tough thing, uh, was his obedience. No? Obedience every time the angel appeared to him. Every time the angel appeared to him in a dream, he will always be instructed by our Lord to go to places, to be in adventures that he never expected, to fly into Egypt, to go back, to return to Judea, and the start of it all, to take the Blessed Mother. It is through obedience that St. Joseph fulfilled God's plan. How about us? You know, I, I think in order to be very obedient, we really have to imitate St. Joseph as well in dedicating some time in prayer, in dedicating some moments of silence. I, I would recommend around 10 minutes at least each day. Silence and try to discern what God's will for you is on that day. Letter S, solicitous, which expresses Pope Francis' combined adjectives, tender and loving. We imagine St. Joseph to be very caring to our Blessed Mother, always ready, always charitable. The invitation of the Holy Father to consider St. Joseph a lot this year was born from this isolation we need to experience with our families. The necessity to be tender, to be loving to all members of our family, first and foremost. Are we tender and loving? All our neighbors, all our friends. E, I am the fourth now, always ready, ever ready. I'm not referring to the battery. No? <laughs> St. Joseph was a person who was so accepting. Accepting to God's will, to God's plans, even though it entailed difficulty. He was always prepared, accepting God's plans. Now, I think um, this has a very profound consequence to our own, our own spiritual lives. 
into our own lives. No? We, I think, have had a relative, a loved one, somebody close to us, a friend who has passed during this pandemic. And sometimes it's so difficult to accept God's will. No? In like St. Joseph, this virtue of acceptance, our value, being ever ready, available, definitely helps. I am now in the penultimate. Actually, it's the first one that uh, the Holy Father was underlining. No? He is a beloved father. He is so prized. And I think this one is also important, a very important consideration, because it is the foundation by which we love. We have to allow others to love us. We have to allow others to appreciate us. We have to allow others also to serve us, to keep us in mind. No? Like St. Joseph, who was so loved by our blessed mother, by our Lord Jesus Christ, he was capable of serving them back. And the H is regarding his creative courage. He was ma managed to be very heroic in many things. I, I think this is why the Lord chose this man in his youthful and blossoming age. That's how I imagine him. Um, there are early writers, or at least in the medieval times, early medieval times, described him as an old man to protect the chastity of our Blessed Mother because they could not imagine that he was chaste even in his adolescence. But many authors also counterweigh this and say that St. Joseph is also a very young person, could have been young because of the many kilometers he had to travel. With that youth and in that creative courage, he was able to conquer, overcome all the difficulties. This is the same thing that is asked of us right now, creativity. Okay. The virtues that we need, the vir that we need, vir means man, is all found in St. Joseph. He is that just man who was obedient, solicitous, ever ready, beloved or prized, and heroic. Through, he, through Mary and with Joseph, we can arrive at a strong, well-prepared relationship with Christ. St. Jose Maria described this tree as like the Trinity on earth. Our relationship with our Lord passes through them. We arrive at Trinity in heaven, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit through Mary with Joseph. And of course, the link to the, three, the two Trinities, Jesus Christ.